Hi there. Thank you for downloading, listening to, and watching the Lean Into Art Cast. This is a show where a couple of visual storytellers get together and take a very a walk around the various topics that tend to cross one's path when you go on this endeavor of communicating with images. We think hard about this stuff, so you will too. My name is Jersey Drozd. I'm a cartoonist and teaching artist, and the other host is named... Hi, I'm Rob Stenzinger. I'm a user experience designer, and I make uh, games, interactive things, and I like to teach that stuff too. A teaching artist as well. Good to see you, Rob. Um, ah, good to see you, Jersey. Not that it will matter to anybody who's watching this after the fact, but we are streaming on uh, non Lean Into Art Day due to scheduling things. So if you wind up noticing that, uh, hey, you know, it's like, why is this in my feed early? It's because we're recording a day early. Uh, but I'm excited to do this one with you. And so, like, I could also phrase it that way too. It's like, I, part of it is I couldn't wait to talk with you, Rob, about note taking. <laughs> Because this is a topic that, uh, how did you say it before we started recording? It's like, this, this is a dungeon with many layers. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> just, oh, I, uh, in, in preparing for this, j uh, just hearing that, I, I care a lot about taking notes. I know you do too. And that um, it, it really, it opens a door to so many things. And I thought, well, if this is a dungeon, this thing has a lot of levels. Like we could, we could delve pretty far here. So, uh <sighs> realistically i think we might be opening up uh, another um like recurring topic finding um ways to make make the most of the notes that we take oh it mm. rhymes <laughs> <laughs> all right well do we want to just like dive into it then you want me to just hit the, the stinger music to get us to the the first part of the episode yeah it's always open for, for a stinger and then we can t talk about how we how we landed on this too little tense music <laughs> okay so uh now we're fully in the topic because the music has oh people are saying they can't hear you um i know why people can't hear you oh there we go there's rob i'm uh, uh, i i know why i had that turned off so okay but you were being recorded just the, the jersey audience. show this time <laughs> no, it's there's we're doing there's so many layers to this tech. Honestly, Jersey setup is uh, like a, an amazing uh, construct that he, you know he's able to do the you know the, like streaming and switching and live producing and all this stuff. It's it's pretty sweet. So anyway, thanks for finding that and making that adjustment. But uh, which is another topic that we keep visiting too is is all of these abilities to like how do we stream and how do we um, you know perform yeah. uh, our art things. So. Yep, yep, yep. So, uh, yep. but uh, so now that we're in the topic, uh, let's talk about where this topic came from because we are in, well, not the middle. I almost said the middle. Uh, we are in the Where are we anyway? Yeah. We're, in, we're in the beginning. It's always the beginning. It's always new beginnings. Uh, we're in the beginning of another creative challenge season, and this is uh, November. So, we're in Art Sound Off Month and artsoundoff.com. Which is what is it, Rob? What's Art Sound Off? Art Sound Off is a creative challenge that you and I started to uh, encourage anyone to do some journaling. And I, uh, you know, we we rec we we emphasize audio, but you can take uh, any kind of form, capturing your thoughts, looking back on it, examining what you make and do, and. We have a variety of prompts to help you out as, in in this journey, and so many different approaches as far as what could be a successful outcome. I mean, you don't have to do 30 journals in 30 days, right? You don't have to do this in November. It's just, this is when we celebrate it. We acknowledge it. We make some noise about it. And, uh, and we, we, um, we find it pretty useful. And then other folks join in as well. And, you know, we use that, the hashtag art sound off to help you um, to find out the things people are posting now, but also that lets you see what happened in the past as well. It's it's pretty neat. It's a whole whole timeline of of artists thinking a lot about what they make and and sharing their thoughts. Some folks think about what they make, and it's private, and that's great too. Yep, you don't have to share if you don't want to, but you just use it as a way to to introduce some more practice into your life. So, the reason I bring that up first of all is because we you know want to make noise about this this thing that we're doing. So we're checking in every day over the month of November too, uh, but. One of the leaners contributed a piece the other day. Uh, their second entry into Art Sound Off was by Owen Jolins, and it was about notebooks. And so we both listened to this one, 
And we both reacted saying like, that's a good topic. And also, I mean, not only do we say it's a good topic, but then Owen actually says at the end, hey, Robert Jersey, if you want to talk more about <laughs> notebooks and note cards, uh, I'd be glad to listen. Here we are talking about notebooks, and note cards. So thank you, <laughs> Owen, for providing us with a prompt. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so here we are, you know, walking down a, 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 a an adventuring road, and Owen's like, "Hey, there's a sweet dungeon over there," and we're like, "Sweet dungeon? Look at that!" And, and yeah, it's it's a big one. So we'll we'll get to some things that we we think about as far as the the both the the taking notes, and and that's that's what we're going to focus on a lot in this first part of, of the of our topic and then we'll, we'll get into like making use of that stuff. Right. So mm -hmm. you know, it's untapped potential if it's, you know, maybe, right. What is it? Mm. So uh, that, that's how we got here. Um, so thinking about the um, like notes, a lot of times physical notes come to mind, pen, pen and paper, all kinds of different forms. Um, like when do you find yourself um, capturing ideas? Uh, what well, does that look like at a lot of meetings, I'm capturing ideas, right? Like I'm taking notes during meetings, trying to capture what, um, and do you want to know, like, just like the situations and not necessarily what I'm capturing or do you? Well, think of it as on the ground, like here we're at, you're, you're at a meeting. What's in your, what, what do you have? Like, are, are you yeah. at a desk? Are you at a wall? Uh, okay. you've, yeah. Yeah. You oh, got well, a bandolier of pens. <laughs> you got, I you got do. Throwing I pens. Do. You've got. Exploding I pens. I, I have a lot of pens and I love them. I love them all. Um, no, so a lot of my note taking happens right where I'm sitting right now because we're in the middle of a global pandemic. So most of my interacting with the outside world hap happens at this desk. Uh, so that's one. But then there's a variety of contexts that I'm interacting with the outside world. One is like I'm a teaching artist. I'm teaching classes, uh, online classes. Um, but then I'm also the executive director of Cartoon Crossroads Columbus. So I'm going to meetings for that organization, capturing notes. Um, during those meetings and those 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 notes tend to be along the lines of action items like what are things i need to follow up on and when and that's where you know my tool is my beloved etp my graph composition notebook where um i map out my week i actually i map out multiple weeks ahead now um because so many of my tasks wind up getting put on okay i got to do that like two weeks from now and i'll put it on instead of like on a calendar i'll put it on you know, my ETP, but then I'm also, uh, you know, going through professional development, uh, as a teaching artist. Uh, so I just, you know, uh, went through a couple weeks of training as, uh, teaching arts and taking lots of notes on the handouts that they provided us. And my notes can be, uh, both capturing thoughts and ideas, but then also just like <laughs> sketching with my <laughs> color pens because, you know, it's like not, not only, uh, you know, I, I, I write with images. And so sometimes like this is a way that I internalize. I remember the conversation that was happening when I started doodling this incredible Hulk drawing. Why was I drawing the incredible Hulk? I don't know. I had a green pen in my hand. Um, so, <laughs> and then, and then like uh, the other instances when I'm sitting and I have a few quiet moments to jot down some story ideas and that's where my little sketchbook comes into play, you know? And I, mm. I love these little paper moleskin uh, books. One, because they're paper. Uh, two, because they're nice and thin. They fit in my, my everyday carry bag really easily. Um, but then, and I don't know, stop me when you want to dig on a, a, a path that we've, we've, uh, done here, uh, is, you know, sticky notes, another one that gets used a lot. And then I've still have my little note card wallet that you introduced me to, uh, years ago, Rob. So all of these tools yeah, get yeah. used at different times. Um, and for different purposes, right? Like this is, so I would say my moleskin is long-term. I'm using this for like jotting out ideas that I won't get to for a while. ETP is like, this is in the next 14 days. I'm going to do something with the ideas that I captured in here, right? Um, mm -hmm. And sticky notes are ephemeral ideas that it's like, okay, I just got to write a quick note about like, d remember to do this tomorrow. And then when it's done, throw it in the trash. Uh, and the note cards are someplace in between. Uh, okay. So you named up just a tons, a ton of tools, techniques, scenarios, uh, all, all this stuff as far as, uh, as far as note taking. Um, so it looks like, um, like the, just the, the raw act of, of, of taking notes is, is like you have something to capture with, you're in a situation 
and you're capturing. And it sounds like you're, you're, you're doing that in different forms, depending on like, what is your intention for, for that? Right. So you've got, um, like you mentioned, you know, short-term, long-term and what have you, um, gosh, what, um, and it seems like just uh, as we, as we've talked about all the different things we talk about on the show, like one of the recurring sort of, um, the note system that gets a lot of, you know, mention, and it seems like it must do a lot of, a lot of, um, you know, purpose. It must be super useful for you. It's, it's the whole emergent task planner. Um, and, and so like, I'm hearing some different verbs as well. It's, it's like, you know, so you're planning, but you're, you're also, um, uh, like, like what, what would you call it? Like you're, you're sifting in a way, like you're at a meeting and information is, is flowing by and think like points, points that have some kind of purpose or commitment and uh, responsibility or follow-up or maybe um, something else about them, right? Maybe they, they have a weight or a concern. And so, you know, you're getting that stuff captured in there. I, I you know, well, how does that, does, is that a fair, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's like fair. Some of the, that's fair. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I think you're 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 really well established as a person who who takes notes, and you know what I mean. Like you're not. You Thank know, you for building. I, Everybody, Rob is modeling the the one of the, the the three primary behaviors I encourage in my classroom is we build each other up, we don't tear each other down. Uh, that's what he's doing right now, everybody. <laughs> so, yeah, I. Maybe, but, but it's, um, it's, it's, it's easy to sort of, um, you know, like characterize and kind of, kind of lose some possibility through like quickly throwing something in a bucket where it's like, I'm a note taker. I'm not a note taker. I only do this kind of notes or, or what have you. And then, gosh, and you hit the other, another thing along the way too, the, the whole like visual note taking. Um, so so many interesting things. And I, and I think we should, uh, we should do a bit of, um, you know, a, a bit more unpacking as far as like, like the why and how, but like, um, I'm like, let's see, uh, listening to, to Owen's, um, podcast. Um, like he talked a lot about notebooks and, and I think I've had so many different kinds of like processes and ways of taking notes. I think about um, like, like, what does it look like? What does it look like? And um, I get, I've been characterized and any place that I show up for any amount of time, I'm the guy who takes the notes. And, and I, I noticed there's, there's plenty of gals and other folks in all different identities, but you're the, like, there's, you get noticed, like taking notes is, something that someone's like, you're observing me? Well, I'm observing you. You're, you're putting the observations in there. What are you putting in there? There's, why you got so many notes? And, and uh, so. What's going on, noty? Yeah. <laughs> why you note take oh all the time? God. <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> I will say, I, I, I want to I dial back like, like six or seven years ago, you came to Ann Arbor to visit me and you and me and Ann went to a restaurant and we were splitting some banana cream pie. It was just like, like some little, like, uh, you know, Applebee's type of restaurant. I forget what it was. Max and Irma's maybe, I don't know, but we're sitting there splitting banana cream pie and we're ta just talking. And the whole time Rob's got his, his, uh, note card wallet out. And as he's talking, he's keeping eye contact, everybody. He's keeping eye contact, but he's doing this. He's like, Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like wh <laughs> while having a it's casual so conversation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and responding in full sentences like you weren't consumed with it it's just it's it was such a it's so habituated you know so yes i can see how that would in certain instances it would make people say what what, what you do in all the notes for noti but uh i well i i've i've grown accustomed to it at any rate i find it charming because i just like rob is here he is he is immersed in the moment and he is you know he is observing it and watching it happen that's that's amazing so maybe um, are, you could be the uh, the designated or um, joked about note person, or you could be a subtle person who just once in a while a, a, a bit of fact comes up, like yeah. oh this is a you are this is a link 
this is a, a phone number or um, a, a certain critical name, right? Yep, Who do yep. I need to talk to, right? And that's, uh, that's sometimes what it looks like for, for a lot of folks. It's like, I have only one more pe one piece of information I want to be extra sure I retain, right? That's fine. And, and I don't like folks who do that don't typically get, get uh, called noty. Um, <laughs> but, uh, uh, and I don't mind. I don't mind. So I, if I think about in like, you know, as a top, I, I've been like a note taking person for a long time. I think we could, we could like, well, what's the, what's the point of that? Like, why, why have you always done that? And why, you know, so it, you know, I think I, I have, I have the tendency to want to, you know, continue to build and shape things and understand, you know, who, who things are for, or like what I could possibly do. I get ideas all the time as I'm out in, out in the world and they don't always, it, it runs in parallel. It runs in parallel to the current experience. So sometimes notes are um, multiple timelines uh, of, of ideas and, and whatnot. But um, so can, can I and, ask and, you, can I yeah. come back at you with a question now about your use yeah, of these please. things? Because you have a lot of things that like, so you have this whiteboard behind you, which is like, you sent this to me last night. You were like, yeah, this is, this is the, the whiteboard I put together while listening to Owen's podcast, and which gave you a framework for this. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> so if you could explain to me the scenarios where you're breaking out whiteboard, sticky notes, note cards, yeah. what are the different use cases for those instances? So just like thinking of the raw mechanics of it. So I'm going to capture stuff. Um, I could be capturing things, um, just any experience. It, it like a note, a notebook is great. And, uh, and, and so what can I keep with me uh, is typically a small notebook. And so I've, I've um, this, the, the smallish note moleskin kind of thing or a hard backed clone uh, discount for knockoffs, right? I, like and those were a very, common thing that I would carry with me. And so, you know, like this would be, you know, roughly a page of notes where I could have drawings and, you know, uh, like section things off. I'm always, I'm doing a, a information in layers, uh, like getting, you know, what am I hearing? What, what are we trying to, to do? Why are we trying to do this? What's something that stands out to me? Because in a way, like you're, you're constant. I'm, you know, this is, I don't think I'm the only one who do this. So I'm, I'm just phrasing it with like a, your like, so you're in a situation and as information washes over you, um, things stand out. So I capture things that stand out and then I relate the things over time and then find interesting connections and whatnot to then bring back into the conversation. Right. So it's, it's a kind of investigation, uh, note taking that I that I often do and then inter inter um, spursed with with you know potentially drawing or or highlighting other things or just maybe um, doing the keeping my uh, senses all tuned in and focused by keeping my hand moving on paper and uh, maybe doodles come out, stuff like that. Like your incredible Hulk you showed earlier, Jersey. And uh, okay, what else does it look like? So, so that what ended up happening at, at a certain point is I switched from this book, which was a lasted for years. Um, this format, I've got a ton of these things, uh, and then I ended up switching to note cards. Note cards have been the, like a a very multi purpose helpful thing because one of the tensions in a small notebook is the uh, is, is to, is the re the ability to recompose and rearrange is way less flexible. Um, you essentially need to rewrite to recompose and rearrange. And I'm not against that, but then how fast do I need to work here? So like no cards are a thing that now I have a lot of practice with and I carry around the, um, this is, uh, this is probably number seven, right. Of, uh, you know, like my, my note card wallets. And it's just this simple Oxford. Um, it, it's, uh, it, it has a few different pockets in it. There's a central pocket for like extra uh, note card storage. I use um, the like, let's see, uh, what is it? Three by five and uh, blanks, 
because um, the lines, you know, where we're going, I don't need lines. I, I like to make my own lines. So, um, <laughs> so while, while we're anyway, showing them off, the yeah. one the one I have is a right in the rain one with it has folding yeah. uh, in its canvas. Um, opens up with the Velcro flap, and then that's where the cards stay in the middle. And then it has just like yours, like a uh, sort of a hard back to put your card that you're taking notes on. And this is this is the level up because Rachel Ross is watching. Um, mm -hmm. I carry a space pen with the space shuttle on it because um, you can write Ooh. upside down uh, with a space pen. Not that I do, but it, it just makes me feel good. I like having a space pen on my person, and I like the way they write. So <laughs> um, anyway, uh, yes. Yeah, space pen was always my go-to pen. Um, the Fisher uh, space for, pen. For a long time. Yep. Yeah. It's a, it's a good pen. And uh, let's see. That, and gosh, I do admire your um, your note card holder. <laughs> It's a sweet one. Um, and so I, I love these, these simple, these, this is just like a, um, you know, imitation, you know, leather plasticky thing and what have you. And it, it's, um, it's fine. They wear out eventually, especially mm -hmm. if you carry them every single day in your back pocket. Um, always. <laughs> so that's, um, that's really useful. So, you, so I can, I can get ideas down and, and just quickly, you know, capture a bunch of things. And then now it's this little bundle. I, so I can bundle them also. And that's another thing about like the, the note, the bounded, the bound notebook. It's nice, but okay. That's, you know, you're trading off a lot of flexibility for that um, uh, self-containedness of it. Mm. Um, and then, so, so sticky notes, uh, I, I use, I use those. I actually will use cut up paper as well. So depending on what I'm trying to do, sticky notes and cut up paper serve a similar purpose to me um, where you're, you're able to capture a lot of things and then recompose and for the purpose of really trying to understand a bigger problem or need. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that could be plotting a story that could be uh, planning, well, or, or planning a learning experience, planning a podcast. Um, a lot of times that is a, a they're really powerful tools, especially, especially sticky notes when you are collaborating in, in the same physical space. So this is probably a hard time for sticky notes overall. Um, but I love like sticky notes. I will use in a, a solo fashion as well. I, I mean, in the uh, it's, I, it's off camera, but like in the background I have, um, I will like one of my forms of, of, of sticky notes. Gosh, I have another thing I should. There's so many things I should have dug out for this podcast episode. This That's has to be a do... series. Yes, yes, yes. There's too many. Like, it's I'm in the dungeon. You know, <laughs> I am the dungeon. <laughs> and, and there ain't no teleporting know. out for you, Link. You got to go all through all the levels. <laughs> uh -huh. No shortcuts. There's. There, there's traps and treasure all over the place in this in my office as far as the, the, like um, taking notes because so, one of the things you can do if you're like well oh I need portability and I got sticky notes and stuff well you can tape multiple pieces of of paper together and then roll it up and now all of a sudden you have essentially a portable board of of ideas that you've grouped and themed and all that kind of stuff um, anyway. Sticky notes are great also because of their size and you don't, you don't, you are, you don't run a high risk of filling it with too much. And so it's not just composable by, because of its, its uh, physical attributes of, of stickiness and portability, it's composable because it doesn't contain like um, too many disparate ideas. It's often focused. And so yeah. that focus becomes a building block that can you can group with other building blocks. So and I, I actually use sticky notes in my ETP as a way to sort of add pages to pages, if that makes sense. So like I'm, I'm I don't want to show any of my notes because this is privileged. That's one of the hard things I have too. Yeah. Like is is the uh, like the shareable data. Like yeah. Okay. So like so just much. the structure I've shared before is like on my ETP. Yep. Uh, emergent task planner. Here are the hours of the day, uh, nine through twelve, and then 
Here are the number of tasks that I, I may or may not take on the day. I try to keep it at three, but they can be as many as 10, depending on the complexity of the tasks. And then I have a section at the bottom for like what good happened, and that's for me to capture some qualitative data. Like name something good that happened today, whether you did it or somebody else did it. But right here underneath my tasks is my note taking area. This is where I'm going to capture things in meetings. And if I wind up having to build on that, like, okay, well, I'm running out of space, I could start adding, right? another layer to it and another layer to it, right? By adding more sticky notes on top and I can put a bunch of actionable items in the bucket, like use this as a bucket and here's my layers mm. to it. And they'll, they'll remain in here. They'll, they'll, per they'll stay in and persist so I can refer back to it. And I often do in my ETP, I'll say like, okay, here's the task you're attending to today. See October 22nd, task four. And that's where like the notes from that, uh, it, that to do item will come from. Does that make sense? It makes, a, it makes a lot of sense. You're essentially extending and you're adding layers of information on top of the information. And yeah. that's, a, that's a kind of, um, uh, that's a huge utility. You're annotating, right? And there's, yeah. so you could be annotating a lot of different kinds of things for a lot of different kinds of reason, but you've now um, em, embellished in it and in, 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 are solving some kind of problem. So you know, you know what you're trying to do, you know what you're trying to delve into more and you've got some, some supporting information to help you out. Um, um, let's see. Rachel's, Rachel's adding, if I want to permanently keep a sticky note, I use washi tape to add it to a page in a notebook. That's a great idea, too. And I am always a fan of anytime you can add visual interest and beauty to the notes. So like another layer to this that we've talked about the, on the show before is that um, one of my primary tools is my multi-pen because I like to color code my notes and my information so that like without me having to put a box around it saying, this, re this is related to my teaching work. I just switched to red ink. If I take notes of red ink, it has to do with an event that is involved in my work as a teacher. If it's green, it's for a different, purple's for a different, you know, blue is podcasting. Anything notes I take about something that I need to do, it's related, now I see blue, oh, it has something to do with Lean Into Art. I know that now, right? So, so yeah, multicolored pens are also another note-taking tool for me. It's, um, the tools are there for you to arrange information and get it to be meaningful, right? Mm -hmm. And that's uh, it. It's really awesome. I love hearing how, like, like how how you do that with your notes, and and it's just a good, um, you know, it's it, it's it, possibilities and patterns. Like, like maybe maybe that's a useful thing for me. Like, I, I actually I have tried out the whole color encoding um, approach, and it just. I end up doing other things that help draw my visual attention. So I'll, I'll, I'll create uh, boxes, arrows, symbols, and other annotations that, that help with uh, grouping and, and making that uh, stand out as a category or what have mm. you. Mm. Yeah. That's so. That, yeah. Good. What I, again, this dungeon is super deep. We didn't even touch on digital notes, and I feel like we've we're, we've run out of time for this section, right? Okay. Um, so, should we just do digital notes another time, or we could make Let's, a section two about digital notes, or we? No, could, do, I I like the idea of saying let's let's make digital notes a, a follow up episode, because I feel like you have a lot to contribute to that. Um, but what I would like to do is. Um, maybe put it in the top of the second half is demoing how you're taking notes. I, I think that that I like that a lot. I, I do too. Uh, so, and so yes, if, if anybody wants to chip in on like between now and the, and the next time we talk about notes, like what's your favorite digital note taking app? And we can talk about them together in the, the next episode about this, but yeah, we can And why, lot. right? And, like, so yeah. um, the, the list is of, of tools is, is handy, but then uh, yeah, scenario situations. What right? problem does it, it solve for you? Right. Big meetings, small meetings, you know, brainstorming. What, what yeah, what do you, what do you, yeah. I yeah. love that. What problems does it solve, like you said? Great. Okay, so then, so how about in about a minute and a half, we'll come back and we'll do a demo of what it looks like when you're taking notes while somebody's talking. Who's going to talk? I'm going to talk because I'm pretty good at that, that, that rambling or intellectual tumbling is the, the phrase that I like to use <laughs> that is. You need a shirt for that. <laughs> that, like, intellectual tumbling is a t-shirt. So needing to happen. Let, let's let's be clear. It's not tumbling like in an Aikido dojo. It's tumbling like, uh oh, he's falling down the stairs. Do we call a doctor? It's more like that form of intellectual work. <laughs>
I don't know. I think it some I think it comes off as as Jackie Chan very often, <laughs> right? Like almost never an injury and you're flip you're jumping through ladders, flipping around pinball machines if, and if doing you all include, sorts of sweet stuff. If you include the panicked looks on his face while he's trying to just survive <laughs> by pushing pinball machines around, then yes, I'll go along with that. Um but yeah, and then we'll also talk about like, well, you know, how and why do we make use of these notes uh, in the next half. But first, we got to thank some people who make this show possible. And those people are the folks who support us on Patreon. Where's the music? There's the music. Patreon.com slash lean into art is the website. What is it? It's a way for you to give us a monthly upvote. If you believe in Rob and Jersey and what we make here at Lean Into Art, you can support us for as little as a dollar a month. And you can also do it as a one-time contribution, just like, you know, here's what, you know, something to help you guys make the show more sustainable. I'm going to avail myself of the behind-the-scenes content and then, you know, punch out at the end of the month. That's fine, and we appreciate it. But I want to thank five people who have been supporting us on a regular basis. Uh, Jodels Pox. Thank you, Jodels. You can find Jodels on Twitter at jbombartist. And Brandon Dayton. Thank you, Brandon. It means a lot. You can find Brandon on Twitter at Brandon Dayton. And Stephen Black. Thank you, Stephen. You can find Stephen on Twitter at Black's Sideshow. Two S's in the middle there. And Gail Bushman. Thank you, Gail. You can find Gail on Instagram at Nightingale Art. And Becca Hilburn. Thank you, Becca. Longtime supporter of the show. You can find Becca anywhere on the internet at Natto Soup. And you can join them all at patreon.com slash lean into art, where you will find all the shows we make, as well as the extra leans, the shows we record only for people who support us on Patreon. Those posts become an open mic thread. We can take the conversation in whatever direction you want in a safe place with fellow leaners. It also gets you access to the Lean Into Art Discord special Patreon channels, which we'll talk more about in the second break in the show. Patreon.com slash Lean Into Art. Thanks to everybody who supports us there. It means a lot to us. It really does. Thank you so much. All right. I need some more music uh, to get us to this next part of the show. Um, all right. What, what am I going to choose here? Uh, how about Old Faithful? <laughs> Got a Goku shirt on. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> and because Rob is so so jazzed about talking about notes, it's it's fun to see you this this energized. Um, not that you're never not energized, yeah. but like this one, you're like particularly on because we're I think we're we're hitting a topic that you have a lot of passion for. Um, where did he go? Oh, well, he's switching cameras on. Happy, All right. yes, demo happy time. To share. Demo time. So, all right. Um. Okay, digital notes. Oh no, we were skipping over digital notes. We we're going to the demo. Okay, here we go. So yeah. you you gave me some prompts to choose from. Do you just want me to choose the prompt and I'll just start riffing? That's the that's the idea. If you if you like those, you could do something else too. Um, essentially, uh, I'm I'm well. You 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 tossed me a a, a big softball for the first prompt and. Uh, uh, and it just so happens that I played this game for the first time in a long time last night. Um, so you you chose, what do you find compelling about the Metroid series of video games? What do I find compelling about Metroid? Oh my gosh, just don't get me started, but you got me started. Um, it's, it's what a lot of people would say. It's um, about isolation. Uh, it's about feeling very alone in a ooh, very... Ooh, hold on, ooh, ooh, hold on, hold on. Uh, sorry to interrupt you, Jersey. Um, yeah, it is. it is about isolation, but then... Um, part of the whole thing was, there we go, timer. Ah, timer. Okay, thank you. So it's about isolation. It's about being alone in a mysterious place. It's about um, uh, being encouraged to look around on my own terms. There isn't a Navi saying, hey, listen, um, I like in the case of my favorite ones, like Super Metroid and Metroid, the first Metroid Prime, um, the path is not apparent, and there is there are very few wayfinding tools. Um, there's more in Metroid Prime, of course, but but uh, the the sense of feeling lost and relying on my own intuition and exploration and um, problem solving skills, it feels very um, very rewarding, and the leveling up. I, I, I feel like it has more of a payoff than it does in, say, like uh, a twitchy kind of game where I'm just like looking around for things to fire weapons at. Um, I, I love the music. I love the atmosphere and the sort of like how the music contributes to the vibe of each room that you're in. 
Um, I love that it feels just scary enough, but not too scary. <laughs> it's not Resident Evil, right? It's uh, it's 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 haunting. And it's haunting, but then it, there's like just enough dread implied that if I don't figure this out, I'm going to be sorry later on. Um, so, and then, and then of course, like there's the whole idea of like the, the science fiction uh, aspect of it as well. It's like you got wild and mysterious creatures wh- and, and things can be threatening, whether it's a sack of acid that's on the wall that I don't want to bump into, or if it's a mushroom that explodes into a cloud of poisonous gas that I don't want to run into. But it can also be uh, things that are actively trying to harm me. Um, it's that, that peril lies everywhere, and the game is asking me to pay close attention and learn. Um, how are we doing on time, man? I feel like I've been going a long time. Oh, uh, we just passed two minutes. Okay. So, do you want me to keep going, or... Are we good? Um, so, so here's uh, we we absolutely can keep going. I, I think it is it is really fun to hear you um, uh, share unbox your thoughts about about Metroid. Um, but like I can go through these yeah, no, the four note cards I captured so far. Please do. And you, I just you never know how how many note cards will happen per um, per minute on note, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so here's here's a title card. So then I can take. I can take this and go wherever. Title card, maybe I have initial questions when I come in, maybe not. But two minutes is a really, really tight time window, by the way, right? Mm-hmm. But even in that small time window, I'm noticing things that, so so it's this is about going through the flow of information and being present and, and experiencing uh, whatever gets shared and noticing stuff along the way and uh so let's see what was the first oh yeah so this was the second card i took um you know metroid series what do you find compelling um you notice like i don't always finish every sentence um i was going a little extra fast because i knew we were in a very tight time window so the my handwriting is mixed but it's it's serviceable um isolation i started a doodle with a a character in a in a big space Uh, maybe there's mountains and you know, what have you, there's no Navi. I know, I know that reference. That's the little, you know, flying, uh, uh, Sprite that uh, tells Link where to go. Um, there's, uh, so then I, you know, in, in this space where, where there's isolation, the path isn't apparent, there's mystery. So I'm like, I'm remembering both literally what you said, but then, then what might, what else might be there? So I'm also noting from my own experience, things that may end up, I could potentially associate. And so in, because our topic is games, I often think about the um, uh, competency, autonomy, and relatedness framing Mm. to consider uh, an interactive experience where um, what, as a designer or creator or someone analyzing a created thing, what may come across as far as helping you feel competent and, um, and, and a, like a sense of, of skill building and what gives you that freedom in that space and also what is making it more meaningful. And I made a little bit of progress on the relatedness thinking about like you were describing the setting a lot, mm. but you're also describing and implying a lot of a bit, a bit about the choices. And I think given more time, I think I would have probably created a card that came back to that to start to bucket some of the things I was hearing. But um, so I would capture something that that's something I brought with me. You bring something, you bring things with you in meetings and uh, lectures and uh, spaces, right? Mm. And if you think you have a tool that's useful, um, throw it in. You're not just there to be a tape recorder. Um, you're there to, um, f- to, to layer and, and experience and capture uh the, the information is part of your experience, but also just how do you see things and the things that, that come to mind too? questions, right? So like um, lost and rewarding, I wrote why, and then you pay off, you said pay off and didn't, I think you implied maybe, but this is a question for you. So do you think exploration has um, a, a lot of inherently rewarding? Um, yes. Yes. Because uh, it's it? not, it's not just about finding the power-ups. It's also just finding secret rooms and 
vistas and finding a, a, a room that's designed in a really interesting way, right? Um, when when you first come oh. across Fend Fendrana Drifts, you know it's it's breathtaking. I mean, and I know it's just the GameCube, but like the it like it's so visually arresting compared to all the 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 um, well, what am I trying to say? Uh, confinement that you've been experiencing in all the other areas, and suddenly you're in this big open area. Things like that, like complete tonal shifts, is part of the fun of exploration. Mm. That so that's really cool. So I went back to a different card to capture your uh, some of your thoughts on that, and just made a note here for you know for our us in the show is that when you're doing this kind of uh, you know note taking. That's part of the point of this demo is that it's meant to be about uh, like delving and participating and and it's not about being passive, a part of this experience. Again, you're not a tape recorder. So you could set down um, a, a recording tool and mm -hmm. just record a lecture, right? But this is about surfing it and being part of it and and discovering associations in your own mind along the way. And like handles, gateways, doors, windows, um, secret paths that to potentially new understandings too, where questions, right? Mm -hmm. Where, where the, th what kind of things come to mind that would you like to learn more about? Um, and whether that's for now in this session or for follow-up for uh, further reading, what, what could help you, um, you know, get more ideas here. So, all right. And so then the, uh, the, the last, the final note card was, um, thinking about, um, uh, elements of the scenario right so what makes the the setting is sci-fi that that you know that's there's sort of you know sci-fi themes and elements in the game the the, the creatures i and, and you know i didn't get to you know we we hit we hit our time limit but i was right in this space of trying to um maybe create a new diagram that that would give me uh, maybe open up new questions about like what might it be um, about that setting that helped it feel um, otherworldly, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think that's where I where I might go um, from there. But and this was just in two minutes, <clears throat> so four I, cards in two minutes. If yeah, if this uh, were the thirty minute meeting, I I would have let's see what <laughs> um, you know fifteen times that. <clears throat> so Some potentially thirty cards. Uh, or more. Um, if, if I could just like sort of yes and something you were talking about there is like bringing yourself to the, the note taking, I think is something that um, as a teaching artist, I, I definitely resonate with, which is a part of a teaching, uh, I don't know, classroom skill is verifying student understanding by repeating what they've said to you in your own words. So if I'm understanding you right, this, this, and this, and this, is that, is that what you're saying? Mm -hmm. And so when I'm putting it in my own words, I'm also comparing it to my understanding of my context and my framing of the idea. And sometimes I'll reframe what they're saying in order to build b deeper understanding. So that's kind of what you're doing there, right? Like you're kind of like taking it and you're contextualizing with your prior knowledge, your prior understanding of this, of this thing too, both as a way to build bigger meaning, but also like that can be a great like memory device to help you understand like what was being said in the moment as well, right? You're creating... Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. So you're 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 um, you're creating uh, context and associations and more content and stuff. But like it's also you're interviewing your own understanding, and that means you're not prescribing. You're not saying I don't need to pay more attention because I know what this is. I'm checked out. That's it. This is that thing that I I don't need to further investigate. You're saying is this that thing? Um. I wonder, and and that's the point of the activity. Um, if you're if you're you're if you're not wondering, then I think I would ask yourself why. Like why why is there nothing about this experience that's engaging? Maybe you need to study something different, or watch a different show, or go to a different talk, right? If 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 there's if you're if you're not being uh, in, if your curiosity isn't engaged somehow. Mm -hmm. So that yeah. could be a utility to consider. 
Right, right, right. Yes. I, I think that, that that distinction is really important. You're not a, st- a stenographer just capturing everything that's being said, but you are like actively listening and processing while, which is, I think that's a learnable skill, right? Like this is something that, um, so, you know, Mutt is in the chat and said like, oh, I used to listen to your How to Make Comics podcast all the time. Great to find you here. Good to see you. Um, but it, it's reminding me of the Comics Are Great show that I used to do. Um gosh, how many episodes did we do? Like 88 or 90, something like that episodes. And that show was largely me practicing. I would walk in with like three sort of prompts for the guests. Like these are three things that I think I can spend a lot of time talking about with this guest. And then I would let them go. I'd hit them with the prompt, let them go. And while they were talking, I've got my sticky notes right there on the desk and I'm capturing these ideas. Like, okay, that's a possible follow-up. That's a possible follow-up. I don't think I really understand that point. That's something I could use some clarification on. Here's what I think it might mean. So I'm both actively listening to them, grabbing those prompts, thinking about like the next four minutes of conversation while that's happening, and then also watching the chat at the same time. And I remember like people who didn't do that a lot would come in and be like, how do you do like, like what, are, what are you, an octopus? I'm like, no, this, this is something you just practice doing and you, you get good at keep paying attention to those multiple sources, you know? Um, and I feel like the note taking is, is, is leaning on the same skill, uh, that I was practicing in that mode. Mm. Motivation is a huge part where, and I don't, I don't mean motivation, like having, a, you know, like a little shouty spirit shouting at you or like a, like a gruff navvy. Uh, I mean the, uh, like why are you're taking notes? So like my, my place where I began taking notes was just a, in a way it was like my f- wishes for, for the future. Um, I would capture a couple things when I would have a shift at Burger King on a, on a back of a, um, like a placemat. Right. And I would keep it in my pocket and it would be like, well, what do I need to do? What did I say I was going to do? And or like, you know, I, or we're going to have a band practice or I need to start a band or, um, the, uh, like, oh, this was a really uh, cool uh, song someone mentioned or whatever, you know, like, I don't want to forget stuff and I'm making lists, things I hope to do or experience. And it wasn't, it was chaotic. It wasn't that organized, but I was just starting to engage with this thing of, of like um, enhancing my memory. Right. And, yeah. and, and that's, um, you know, that's was enough. Uh, it was enough for a long time. And, and then, like the more I got into like making and building stuff, especially collaboratively, I found a lot more reasons and needs to practice uh, different ways of taking notes. Um, and, uh, but with every one of them, it, it, yeah, I think, I don't, I don't know, like the, the demonstration I, I hope wouldn't, I don't think it was a particular, you know, wizardry, you know, no, it, but thing that occurred, but it may seem unapproachable in some ways. Like I, I, I and it's worth pointing out, like you can, you can, you can navigate a path toward just trying anything that you feel is is reasonable to have a thing capture stuff. No, you're right. You're right. You're right. I'm 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 pointing to like an extreme example where like you're doing like an hour and a half interview with somebody, whereas I I think like a lot of what you were doing when you were taking those notes too. If I were correct me if I'm wrong, Rob, is like you were putting drawing out the first thing that occurred to you as you heard the idea. Like when you drew that character in isolation with the mountains and everything, that wasn't you saying like, ah, I know exactly how to capture isolation. It was just more like you just, whatever picture got conjured in your head right then, that's what got put on the, the page. Cause you didn't have time for anything else. Right. Um, and so like, there's right. like the level of intuition that happens there and intuition can be a very powerful thing, especially I'm guessing most of the people who are watching and listening to this are visually oriented people. Right. And so whatever image that you have conjured uh, upon, you know, like the, the first gut reaction is probably a pretty serviceable image for you. And, and I think that's part of it, too. So if, if we're going to try to like, I guess, let, let's say, um, you know, rounding out the topic, it, like notes need to have a serviceable. I, I, I love that, like that distinction. Uh, what job are they doing for you? Yeah. Um, does it just keep your hand busy? Is it sort of, um, is it an affectation? Is it uh, like, wh- what becomes of it eventually? Is it um, like someone in the chat mentioned uh, becomes recycling, I guess, right? Uh, that's, you know, they're like having a, um, a very uh, impermanent temporariness to your, to your notes. Nothing wrong with that. Like I am someone who, who has practiced a variety of, of like archiving and, and uh, consuming and grooming my archive of notes. I, um, 
I like having thoughtful conversations with the past me's and that, that kind of thing. So, uh, but that's, uh, that's one kind of job for notes. Um, yeah. And, but that, that's what makes it serviceable for me. So that, there's a whole lot of activities that we can cover in another episode of how, you know, you know well, getting the most out of a note archive and stuff like that. Yeah. That, that's almost one where I, I want to like uh, invite some archivist friends of mine on to talk about that because I, I have some people in my circles who are very much into preserving your digital and analog legacy to which I say, I, I push back on that going like, come on, who's going to want to read my notebooks a hundred years from now? Nobody. That's who like, well, you don't know. <laughs> I would say that that's an even another, that's another extension. So like, this is not me saying uh, the immortal note Rob shall live on right, in right. Rob's note mountain dungeon. Right. It will. It's, it's that, I use this for my creative processes. I use this for planning. I, yeah. So there's, there's a, um, those kind of habits, I think, and those motivations are, are um, similar, but I think a little different than someone saying like, hey, um, future generations want to study stuff about artists right. and the better, the, the, the more available the stuff and somewhat organized and protected the stuff is, I think archivists are, are um, super powered up to explore. Yeah that kind of stuff too. Yeah. But then, yes, then there's also that, like what you were describing a moment ago, this idea of using it as a way to have an interview with your past self. Right. Um, there's that, I feel like there's a whole episode that we could do talking about like reviewing your past notes and what do you, what do you have to learn from that? Um, okay. Well, do, mm -hmm. do you feel like we got around, is there anything else that you want to close out this, this first pass at note taking with? Uh, I, well, I, th I think, uh, just, we could, you know, reiterate that, uh, starting where you're at with any kind of note taking is, is a worthwhile thing. You have now given yourself the opportunity to sort of, to, to re-experience and connect with and expand your cognitive power, right? You can go back and slowly process something that went by quick. You can do all kinds of stuff with notes. And so, um, including, you know, you journals, change logs, um, powering up, uh, tactical and strategic processes, designing stuff. I mean, notes are, I think, it, uh, um, a really, uh, a powerful tool that you can take a lot, a lot of different places, even if it's this informal realm of, uh, I just, you know, something happened and I want to remember and, uh, uh, that's that, that's good. That that's good enough. You might find new uh, new places to go with it, or or not, depending on how you you relate to to notes. Or and or you may I don't know. Like maybe maybe you you are uh, getting one of those uh, stacks of of uh, note cards as we speak, <laughs> and are transforming into a note person. So I don't know, <laughs> but we're here to support you, and we'd love to hear more of your thoughts along the way. We'll we'll and we'll share more. So um, the openness and that this is a community that we you know we'll revisit this topic. Um, there's more to cover. Yeah. I don't think we cleared the dungeon. No, no. Was, we, all we did was just pushed a couple of kobolds back into another sub chamber and said, "Have a nice day someplace else." Um, <laughs> So, okay, well, cool. Then thanks thanks to Owen for uh, prompting this this topic, and thanks to everybody who's hanging out in the chat. We're going to take one more break, and then we're going to come back and talk about our two-minute practice, which actually had kind of a note takey kind of vibe to it, in a sense, um, which was uh, drawing a character, for two, uh, like a, a bunch of characters on a page, one character at a time, two minutes at a go. Uh, to create like a sort mm. of a, a montage image, see what happens. Uh, I've got mine right here, ready to talk about it with you. Mm. But first, we got to thank a couple more people who make this show possible, Rob. What do you say? Yes. I say that sounds awesome. Okay. I, uh, you got yours too. mine as well. All right, cool. Yep. All right. So uh, the other people who make the show possible are us. We make the show possible. And the thing that I make that I hope you will check out is the 4 Million Years Later podcast, which is a show that I record with my buddy Hoover. It's an audio podcast, which I just recently started posting to YouTube as well. And it is a weekly show where my buddy Hoover and I watch an episode of the Generation 1 Transformers cartoon series and then analyze the story. 
So it's a story analysis show. It's got also a lot of nerdy um, rationalizations for the weird inconsistencies that happen when you have a project of that complexity where there's that many writers, there's that much speed and churn, um, and largely built to sell toys. So a lot of weirdness happens in a cartoon like that, but also a lot of really intentional, joyful things. And you can find it at 4millionyearslater.com, and you can find it in podcatchers everywhere. If, it, if you have been listening to it and you haven't yet, giving it a five-star review helps more people find the show. So thanks to those who have been doing that as well. Um, Rob, are you ready to talk about your thing? You are. Yeah, I am. So I offer a variety of products and services related to helping you um, uh, power up and practice your personal and professional growth as a creative uh, creative person, right? So I do uh, creative process coaching and I do workshops where you can check out these things at your own time, your own, you know, they're all like time shifted. You can, you can uh, purchase and watch and carry them around with you uh, in a variety of ways. And two that I want to highlight in particular are, well, drawing user journey maps. This is a, like, and when I say workshop, it's like 40 minutes, 47 minutes or so. Uh, yet with, uh, you know, like it breaks down this big topic of how do you, um, combine ideas from a variety of perspectives in a timeline that really puts yourself in the in the um in the in the mindset and such circumstances in situations that the people you serve with what you make are experiencing and then seeing that from all kinds of layers of of uh maybe you're working on a team that is a cross-functional team lots of different skills and stuff that could be uh legal and business and engineering and uh all kinds of stuff. Um, well, design, you get to weave together a variety of perspectives and understanding that, that all, all focused on the, the user's journey and then see one another's creative needs and voices as well. So it's a really huge power up for collaboration and for, uh, uh, well, thinking about like, what are you going to do next with that thing that you make and see possibilities in uh, how you can help the people you serve with what you make. So yeah, drawing user journey maps to design user experiences, gather ideas and collaborate is at skillshare.com. Search for Rob Stenzinger or just go to, um, well, robstenzinger.com slash store.html and uh, click on the Gumroad link or Skillshare link right there. And then quick mention of customizing your next creative challenge. We're in the midst of November and this is when we celebrate Art Sound Off. So that's a kind of creative challenge. I did a video uh, that I shared of using my own workbook from this workshop. So you can get a you can get a taste of like some of what it is. Uh, it's not the fully facilitated guidance to help you know walk through all the exercises, but you see me walk through the workbook and thinking about what am I going to do for this creative challenge? And that's what this is all about is, is finding to a way to make a creative challenge work exactly for you where you're at right now. Are you, uh, are you there to learn something, to make a thing, uh, of a shippable product or like what, what do you want that to feel like? And this helps you work that out, think it through. So all this stuff and more is available at robstenzinger.com slash store.html. All right. And the last thing we hope you'll check out is the Lean Into Art Discord. We have a forum where you can go interact with other people who enjoy this project we call Lean Into Art. There are three public channels or four public channels now. Uh, and then there are the three behind the scenes for Patreon uh, supporters only channels. And the invite link to the Discord is in the show notes for this episode and every episode. If you've never done Discord before, you can think of it as private Twitter. It's like, t it's the same kind of idea where it's threaded conversation where you type in text, but you can also embed media like images, uh, GIFs, I think even video links and so on. Uh, but it's a way for you to have time shifted conversations uh, about the show so that it's not just a thread of comments per video, but you can talk about things in between the shows and even share some of the things that we talk about with the um, Lena Tart two minute practice, which we are about to get to now. Ready to two do some minute two... practice? Yes. Hey, Jersey. Hey, Rob. We're back to do this thing where we check in on a thing two minutes at a time for a couple weeks, and uh, just see how practicing something in a uh, hopefully uh, time and emotionally inexpensive way, uh, so chronologically and emotionally inexpensive way, leads us to mm -hmm. new discoveries about our work. So, what was our practice this week or these two weeks? Ah, well, uh, 
we we definitely have, have been dialing toward that that lower uh, lower tension kinds of practice. And this one is, uh, and, and well, for us, right? But, you know, for, and we, we do like to draw. So uh, we, we chose to challenge ourselves or challenge, choose to practice filling a page or canvas with doodle characters. And so just functionally, just pick any kind of page and then two minutes at a time over the course of, you know, one to two weeks, see how it fills up just by doodling characters it's um yeah that's uh and then maybe something emerges from it who knows yeah and i was excited about this one because i liked the idea of designing something from the principle of put something on the page and then react to that oh something else on the page now react to that uh this goes back to an experience i had ages ago um where i was drawing it was like doing like a group drawing session with friends and i was sitting next to somebody who was really having difficulty getting started they were just staring at the page and staring at the page and i just whispered to them like just put something on there put anything and then ideas will happen and they did they started putting some doodles on there and boom they had something to react to so like sometimes i think we can get bewildered by this idea of showing up with a design in mind and that can happen i mean i've certainly had pages where like the image just like occurs to me and i'm like oh i see it and now i can draw it and those pages are usually like my favorite pages but mm, a lot of the time it's me sort of like just guessing in the dark it feels like that and that's what this practice kind of like i felt like i was I, I expected to reconnect with that and i was grateful that i did how did you find it hmm. rob well let's see i mm, it felt very brainstormish mm -hmm. in a way. Um, and, and, and I do, uh, I guess if I, I mean, this is the time to, to unpack the experience. Um, but it just kind of flew by so fast. But if I really think about it in the moment, there's always this, I haven't touched the page yet with my current drawing tool. And I think, I don't know, I, I just have this, 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 uh Oh, and, a re and like a reminder feeling of like, ah, just go, just go. And also like always feeling that like, I haven't put a line down. I have no idea what I'm really doing with the lines. And uh, oftentimes, right. And so I went back and forth and, and did a few different styles of doodling. Mm. And like, there's a little bit of the um, style, like some doodling styles get rid of some of the uh-oh feeling. Uh, but, but like, if I have like a permanent marker and a blank page and, and my, my hand is right about to make a line and I don't know what line I want, I just, I'm always going to feel this. Uh oh, I don't know. Is this a good idea? Yeah. What am I doing? So, so that's, that's like some of the feeling of it, I suppose. Yeah. And, and I, I get the same feeling from pages from time to time. Like the blank page can be a pretty, pretty daunting thing um when i'm thumbnailing you know and and i think especially when i'm thumbnailing and that's when like just throwing a box down okay panel border there's your panel border work with it you know but is it the right one <laughs> will you relax and just do the work <laughs> <sighs> yeah the let's see feeling relaxed enough to just go and knowing that um, I mean, this is you know, like one of the greatest things about like while well, practicing and learning about uh, making comics is that sort of staged creative process and, you know, trusting it and trusting that you don't have to have perfection instantly and you probably aren't going to get it at the end either, <laughs> but you'll arrive somewhere more and more thoughtful and whatnot. And so, but, but that, that early stage where you go from nothing to something is still, um, you know, it's, 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 there's a, I think, I guess it's just, there's a real natural contrast and tension, yeah. the, yeah, built right in to that scenario. So, uh, what did you end up drawing? Do, do we get to look sure. at it and talk yeah. about it? Yeah. Let me pull it up on the screen. So, uh, I decided that I wanted Whoa. to, I wanted to play with, so I, these are five sessions. Um, I wanted to play with the idea of drawing the Amazon Academy characters, but like a little bit younger, just to just to play around with like what it would it look like if they were all like between like eleven and thirteen. 
And so I started with Jenny right here, uh, one of the main characters of the series. And I just, and, and like, I, again, I was trying not to think too hard about it. I was really just trying to like let the spirit of play get into this. So I just drew her in a pose that I felt was kind of interesting. Like she was in this defensive yet ready, like coiled, ready to pounce pose. None of this other stuff. I, I circled everybody in a colored line to indicate like each session, right? So, you know, I had her and then nothing else. And I'm like, okay, well, then when I came into my next session, I was like, okay, well, she's reacted to something. She's coiled about something. Uh, and I've got all this space. What if something was about to envelop her? And so then I just thought of the word Cyclops because Amazon Academy is like a Greek mythology uh, high school comic. And I'm like, okay, well, what, what do I not think about when I think of Cyclope, Cyclopes? I'm like, okay, well, you know, like long spindly arms and waving hair. And so I just like, ran with it i think it was only two minutes i didn't get time to think about it too hard so cyclops was next and then theodora um was the third one I was like okay well now i've got all this space over here somebody needs to be reacting to what's about to happen so here's theodora leaning back maybe with one knee down getting ready to come back in with her spear and then i had all this negative space in the middle here to fit in jordan and sophie um so, and the tools I used was a combination of, this is, this is another one that probably matters. Um, I had a Pentel uh, mechanical pencil with, um, do I have the lead on me? I thought I had the lead. Um, it, it's actually, oh, here we go. I, I've, I've recently discovered this blue, this blue lead from uh, Uni, uh, oh. and, I, and I love it. I, I've, I've been using Pentel lead for probably 20 years now, but this stuff uh, erases so clean. Um, so, and, and it, it, it comes out just like a little bit darker than the Pentel blue lead. So you can find this at jet pens. It's, it's uni uh, nano dia color blue lead. Mm -hmm. um, and then to finish the, the, the graphite pencils, I was using the Palomino black wing, which my wife, Anne recently turned me on to. They're, they, they are nice pencils. So, um, and I and I like I like the idea of being able to do the you know the the edge of the pencil kind of shading like I did on the you know ah uh, okay yeah is that is that a particular strength of the black wings well just the or just that you you just went with a a pencil yeah um, what hardness uh, were you, is that um oh gosh what hardness is it I think it's just like an HB. It's okay. the Palomino Blackwing 602, whatever that amounts to. So, um, so yeah. Huh. All right. Wow, that's uh, <laughs> super funny. That's some... Uh, I, t I went a different route. Instead of actually drawing one character at a time, I, each session I just kept doodling and doodling and seeing, um, not trying to necessarily do how, like, how many things can I draw in this, in this time frame? It just seeing what came out and, mm. um, but not going for like one pose at a time and one actual character at a time in okay. each session. So that's, uh, and now I'm thinking that, I mean, what you did is a pretty awesome approach. And I, you know, I don't know, maybe I would have learned more by doing, just mm. sticking with that. Right. Because, hmm. I mean, you have an interesting composition. That looks like a desktop or a poster. Like, that is, like... <laughs> well, you're very like, kind. It's, that's... Uh, uh, I mean, you developed, like, something came out of this practice, in my opinion, that, like, that has, um, uh, a, you know, potential utility thing. You don't, at the very least, conceptually, if not, um, you know, toward, further toward realization, right? Mm -hmm. So... Uh, Cause again, it look, it's a cool composition that looks very posterish to me. Uh, it, 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 to be clear, that was not the intention. The intention was just to sort of like react to putting down one thing, putting down another thing, just keep reacting and see what comes out of mm -hmm. it. And so like, like the, the Jordan and Sophie at the end were really just me going like, I got negative space. What can I do with that negative space? Right. So it's just, a, it, it, for me, the practice was about playing with reacting to stuff thrown on the page. So I'm, I'm glad, it, but the composition that emerged, though, so like those simp those rules you followed are, are ended up like becoming a, a composition that it's like there are there there are characters that are have greater emphasis because of their sort of uh, size dominance and uh, energy in their pose, right? 
Mm -hmm. And that's where, however you did it, reflexively or intentionally, instinctively or planned, it was uh, I, what emerged it, just by following those rules and by you, you know, and your style. It's, it's, I, it, I can't help but to just, you know, react. That's really, really interesting. And, and, and now I'm thinking like, oh, I mean, that, that, I don't know what I would have produced, but like having like just more specific characters and relationships. So anyway, I'll share, you, you'll see what yes. I, you'll yeah, see what see I mean what, here. See what you did. So by contrast. Um, okay. So I worked on a large format piece of paper because there's something about the, like the, the two minute practice thing where it's, I don't know, I just, like the, the big, the bigness of this kind of thing lets me uh, just potentially move around more and stuff. And I didn't, I didn't realize that this time where it's like my arm motions can be bigger and stuff. And I like that. Um, I started with like, there's each little cluster of characters is a different. Um, I picked up a different tool uh, almost every time, I think. Yeah. Hmm. Every time I had some common ground where I, I used a Sharpie to clarify some stuff. So, so the, like my first round of practices were these little green characters and all kinds of green stuff came to mind. Um, like a little lettuce character, a, a tree, uh, a mossy rock, that kind of thing. And, uh, but doodly, doodly as heck, this is like note taking style mm -hmm. composition here. Um, fast and uh, experimental because you know, some things it's like, I don't know, like, like I understand that that's there, there, that something might be a turnip, but that thing next to it, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a goatee blob. That's yeah. What the yeah. heck is that? Yeah. Um, but, and then you, anyway, so like, but yes. the bottom right is you, you broke out a completely different tool for that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That, and that continues. So then I, I went, I used, um, you know, an, an orange marker to create some outlines, but then I grabbed a, um, a, a, a brush pen and went up. Oh, yeah. Okay. Whoops. Yeah. I was, I was started looking at the wrong monitor here. So yeah, <laughs> then I, so I, then I grabbed a brush pen to, um, you know, just turn that shape into a character, like what, what comes out of it. And so in, in each of these, it's like, there's maybe a character I like, and I think, Oh, that conceptually could, I could turn it into something cartoony and, and interesting. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, more a more realized expression of this rough idea that points towards something. Uh, I kind of like the angles on the bird in this one, um, and like the rock over here. I, I kind of like that. But then, uh, then I went. So it was like I went with just one tool. Then I used two tools, and then I used two tools in a different way, where um, a lighter background. Thing. Like like I used an alcohol marker for for some background uh, blobs, it's just shapes, quick scribble, and then used a sharpie to to then turn it into something. Mm. So that's um, what do I have here? Yeah, you're also working really big. That's the the other difference in the, the two, our two approaches is you've got a sheet that looks like it's like uh, I don't know twenty or thirty inches wide by twenty 16 something by twenty or fifteen by twenty. Okay. So I'm looking at the 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 demon who's shrugging, the, like the snake demon who's going like. <laughs> it's like, uh, it's so funny. It's like it, I'm a dragon, apparently. You know, like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and like just the big swooshes on it. So like I'm I'm wondering like did that change things for you? But having that much space to work with, like did you find that you're drawing any uh, any different? Well, in a way, it's like each cluster could have been on a, on a, a standard size sheet of paper, right? Okay. It's just that I knew if I was going to do a lot of characters, if, if, if you know, emerging. So it, it gave me, it let me sort of reset. And I never dealt with that tension, the composition tension you dealt with, mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. each time it was like a light tension of a grouped set of characters quickly, you know, scribbled out in two minutes, right? Yeah. But, um, then let's see, I think the last one I did was just pencil. And I don't, I don't know, like some little, little thing on a cloud and a person with a sword. So, um, I mean, really rough, rough development, sort mm -hmm. of scribble a bunch of things in, in a couple of minutes. And that's 
and do it on a big piece of paper. So I avoided and like any of that, like, how, how are these things going to fit together? Mm, um, mm. Is more what the bigness helped me with. Um, and normally there's, I would do like bigger, big, big, big lines. And, and like, um, this is where I, I just said, I'm going to do the two minute practice. And this choice of what size paper influenced the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, which, you know, that's something to, to think of as, as well, like in the future, would I, would I prefer to not, um, you know, uh, that's the thing with the practice. It's like, what kind of outcome I, I got the experience of doing this, but then, um, you know, like picking what kind of thing will be the place where I practice this exercise. It's, it, it, it affects, it affects a bunch of practices. Yep. So. Yeah, no, that that's very true. Like, so like my approach was I was specifically going for something that was more portable, right? Like, uh, but I do like, and, and you know, we were talking in Leon's Heart this week about dry erase boards. It's like one of the things I miss is I don't have my big dry erase board behind me anymore like I had in my old studio. And I, I really want one back because I do think that the the size of the canvas affects the kind of practice that you're doing. And that's something to keep in mind. Um so, yeah. Um, okay. Well, what, do you have any thoughts or reflections or uh, wonderings about what we're going to do next week or this next for the next uh, practice? Yeah. Um, let's see. We've been going visual. It's a comfort. It's a it's a common comfort zone mm -hmm. for us. Um, I don't mind that. I don't mind something comfortable and less pressure. We are in the, in a, in a month of, we haven't mentioned art sound off during this segment, but um, you know, art sound off is a creative challenge that uh, Jersey and I started to get into uh, celebrate journaling as an artist. And uh, you can learn more about it at artsoundoff.com. And because it's going on right now, it, it affects time constraints and things. Right. So uh, thinking about that, it's like, am I shopping for a challenge? that is you know what i mean like what yeah. what am i really looking for here i i i don't mind the idea that this is a uh i don't know like the word that comes to mind is like like if if a two minute practice is a is a meditative pause or break in the other challenge that i'm experiencing i, I don't mind that i mean is there something that well, you could... we, 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 we tend to have like sort of buckets for uh, what we've been doing. There's been like writing ones, drawing ones, making mm -hmm. music or noise ones, and then just plain physical ones, right? And we did like a sitting for two minutes. We did, um, uh, I'm wondering if there's like another, like a two minute physical one that we could do that would sort of be a, per like to, to borrow language from Kate Stenzinger, uh, a purposeful pause, can we create a purposeful pause while we're doing, while we're like rushing through all these other challenges and uh, projects? Uh, well, um, do you do um, any kind of stretching in your workspace? Not enough. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It, 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 you just asked me if I floss every day. Um, no, this is something I do with my students all the time as I walk them through various stretching exercises that are in the terrific book, uh, Drawing Stronger by Creator Willenberg, um, which uh, I highly recommend. A, a dear friend of mine uh, got it for me as a gift one year when they noticed that I was having a lot of problems with my forearms, like in terms of like soreness and stiffness. Um, so stretching, yes, very good idea. Two minutes of stretches, right? Mm -hmm. So part of this, uh, a lot of two minute practices. There's some mild amount of setup, and this is this isn't isn't meant to be some something extreme. So hopefully, it's uh, stretches you're familiar with that you think would would help you, you know, um, you know, throughout your your day, your creative work, what have you. And so you may know about know of stretches already, or maybe that you know. Checking out that book for reference. Um, drawing up, stronger. Draw stronger, I think, okay. is what it's called. I'll look draw it up. Draw stronger. Draw stronger. Uh, Creota Wilberg, I think, is how you say the last name. Uh, okay. Ah, self care for cartoonists. Let me pull it up on screen. Uh, come on, let me just look at it. Okay, here we go. Draw stronger. Self care for cartoonists and other visual artists by Creota Wilberg. 
Um, you can also, <sighs> that book has a bunch of great stretches in it. Um, and it's also just a, a great guidebook for, you know, taking better care of yourself when you're, if you're spending a lot of time at the desk. Hmm. Yeah, that sounds really cool. So I think that then, you know, or, or pick the source of, of, of your, you know, to your, to your liking, but mm -hmm. sort of nominate the thing that becomes your, your, that's probably a prep before you get into this. Cause, and you can use the two minute practice for the prep as, as well. Like you may use an, use a practice, set a timer and say, I'm going to go pick what stretches I'm even doing. I don't know because I'm too new to this, right? And that's mm -hmm. okay too. Yeah. That's that's part of the point of the practice. It gives you the space to try those things. So, all right. There we go. We stretching. got we, two Sounds weeks good. stretching two minutes at a go. Thanks, Rob. Thank you, Jersey. Okay, well, I think we've done a podcast again. So uh, thanks to everybody who's been watching and listening, who participated live in the chat, and then also you know who downloaded and listened afterwards. We record this show weekly, usually on Thursdays. Uh, we stream it live around noon Eastern time, 11 a.m. Central. Uh, stream it on a variety of platforms and collect it as a podcast at leanintoart.com and patreon.com slash leanintoart. We'll be back next week with, uh, with more. Until then, everybody, I have been Jersey Drozd of LeanIntoArt.com, Jersey Drozd on Instagram. And I've been Rob Stenzinger of LeanIntoArt.com and Rob Stenzinger, all kinds of places like Instagram. Okay, bye. Show notes for this episode can be found at LeanIntoArt.com. You can also follow us on Twitter at the user LeanIntoArt, and you can reach us via email at LeanIntoArt at gmail.com. And remember, leaners aren't wieners. Thanks for listening.